here we go again. Another cave diving disaster this week, and this one focuses on the story of Simon Halliday. This story does however differ to previous cases I have covered, as this death wasn't due to a mistake caused by the diver himself, but by the equipment he used. When Simon met his fate on that fateful day, the cave diving community lost one of its best and most active members, so I hope the telling of his story does him justice. Simon was a 49 year old father of two and came from Clitheroe. He was an accomplished cave diver who would return to the sport after a two year break while on vacation in Egypt. Simon gained his diving qualification after diving in the Red Sea and from there racked up many achievements others could only dream of. He was a member of the cave diving group's northern section, as well as other organisations. He was known to be one of the best. According to his friends, he was one of those people you look at and think, how the hell did he do that? Simon was always the strongest in his team and was always planning his next project and looking to push himself. He wasn't just known as a great caver though, he was known to have an infectious energy. In January 2004, Simon Halliday arrived at Clayton Lamour's Harriers, a running group. At this point, he was already an experienced and knowledgeable caver, but he wanted to enhance his fitness and endurance, as he often referred to himself as the fat caver often spotted at the bar. He was always eager to seek out and conquer the next challenge, and of course, like he had done his whole life, he aced it and became a great fell runner, competing in some of the hardest races in fell running. This includes the Yorkshire Three Peaks, the Bends of Jura, and Old County Tops. However, Simon's true love still remained caving. On the 4th of January 2020, he had travelled to the diving location known as Lancaster Hole with his two buddies, David McDonoghue and Kevin Gannon. Lancaster Hole is a gateway to the Three Counties system, and one of England's largest limestone cave networks that stretches beneath Cumbria, Lancashire and the Yorkshire Dales. The hole itself is in Cumbria and was discovered in September of 1946 by George Corners and Bill Taylor. The hole was popular and everyone is welcome to visit the cave at any time of the year, but you must make a reservation in advance. This is a dive Simon had done before and he wanted it to be a solo dive which according to him would take no longer than three hours. His friend Mr McDonoghue said the dive at Lancaster Hole was not one that he himself would have felt confident undertaking. He stated, that isn't because I think it's a dangerous dive, but it is a serious dive. On that day, more water was rushing into the channel than typical, but this didn't deter Simon and he went ahead with the dive anyway. Divers had been exploring the hole's downstream route, which was some 900 meters beyond the sump pool where it was regularly accessed. Halliday was wearing a rebreather that was reported to be in development and so unavailable commercially. Sump UK, a sporting products firm, had provided it to him for the dive. A diving rebreather is an underwater breathing apparatus that collects the carbon dioxide from a diver's exhaled breath so that the considerably wasted oxygen content as well as any unused substance can be recycled aka rebreathed. The last thing Simon ever posted was the following. Just setting off now, I'll be underground all day, we'll post something later. Simon's friends waited, waited, and waited some more. Before raising the alarm, his friends waited four hours following his departure. They left an extra hour as they assumed Simon was okay. After all, he was one of the best. After the fourth hour, they became worried. They contacted Cumbria Police and a cave rescue organisation was contacted. Up to 40 members of the cave diving group were claimed to have responded at the time to help in the search for Simon. The search was now on, but it didn't take them long to sadly find their missing friend. Halliday's body was found 14 minutes and 60 metres into the underwater passage. The diver who found Halliday's remains was Anthony Seddon. 
When Halliday was brought out of the water, his oxygen supply pipe looked to have been detached or ripped out, though it was unclear if this happened during the dive or after the recovery. A spokesman stated, We searched from the point where the cave divers entered Lancaster Hall downstream passage. Other entrances and possible exits were also searched by team members and the cave diver in case the diver had emerged from one of the systems elsewhere. Unfortunately, whilst conducting his underwater search, the rescue diver discovered the missing diver approximately 60 metres into the sump. The casualty was immediately brought back to the sump pool chamber and removed from the water, where it was apparent that he was deceased. All team members were then instrumental in conducting a lengthy and difficult extraction back to the surface of the fell. The casualty was then conveyed to Bullpot Farm and handed over to the care of Cumbria Police. In the inquest, data from Mr. Halliday's dive computers confirmed the theory that his rebreathing equipment had failed and he had switched to his bailout option. Dr. Nicholas Shaw, assistant coroner for Cumbria Police, concluded Halliday's rebreather had most likely failed him and recorded a verdict of misadventure, with drowning as the medical cause of death. Simon left behind a wife and two children. According to his wife, Simon had a lustful life and made the most of every day. He was a very loving husband and father and the incident had left a huge hole in their hearts. It was clear Simon left an impact on many people's lives. This is evident by the countless posts on the Pegasus Diving Club's tribute to Simon Holiday. To see this video out, I will read a following statement by one of Simon's closest friends. My early memories of caving with Simon are somewhat blurred and though we did a lot of hard caving in the early years, I truly got to know him over the last few when my passion for caving was reignited. This was in no small part to the energy and relentless enthusiasm of Simon badgering me and the club to go caving, i.e. help carry his bottles or sort some of the new projects he was planning. He would think nothing of rising early to fit in a quick five mile run before a caving trip and he would always be the strongest member of the team. Most of the stuff he had achieved I couldn't have even attempted in my prime. He was truly a remarkable person with boundless energy for the things he loved to do and his passion was infectious which brought both new life to the club and for those that were fortunate enough to go underground or dive with him. He was ever helpful and encouraging in his own unique way and nothing was too much trouble for him if he needed help. I remain numb at the loss of such an amazing person, but I am honoured to have been able to share some of the unique times with him, and he will never be far from my mind. I dearly wish our friendship and adventures could have continued. Our deepest sympathies go to his family.